Howdy duty. How's everyone doing this morning? Oh, the seat's warm. <laughs> Mama B was just on the hot seat. I should have made her uh, go live with us. We are uh, gearing up, starting, well, not starting any earlier than I always start. However, we are going to be flying out here soon. And so uh, we got two people in the hot seat at the same time. Get my Peloton going. I don't know if you guys are on Peloton or not, but I uh, ride with a gal named Allie. Good morning, Kelly. What is that sound? Welcome to the Peloton family. That's I'm different. Love. And in this oh, we're going to turn Allie down. Allie's awesome. She's got the raddest hairstyles in the entire world. And I always tell all my black sisters when they have their hair done differently, I'm like, gosh, I wish I could rock that. And I was in a fashion show last uh, last year, and one of the girls said she was getting ready, and she saw her blonde weave, and she was like, it just screamed your name. So I thought I'd bring it to you. And I'm like, yes, this is amazing. And she's like, seriously, you're going to wear it? I'm like, yeah, put, if you're a, like, yeah, put it on me. So uh, she, sure enough, put this uh, huge blonde weave as a top bun during this fashion show and then they took an African head wrap and wrapped it around. I think it's on my reels. You can go look for it. I had so much fun that not only did I get to connect with women in a total different way, um, we were laughing the entire time because they're like, I would never expect you, one, or a white girl to own weave like that. And I'm like, oh yeah. And that girl gifted it to me. So I've worn it once since then. It was for Halloween costume, which might not count. However, I should show up with it. Maybe on stage at Grow For God. I'll bust out the weave. Anyway, that's not why I'm coming on to talk to you this morning, but this girl's hair, it's amazing. Oh, what a morning, Tuesday morning up and at them. I have a little bit of a different um, headspace coming at you this morning. And um, I wouldn't say it's better or worse. It's just the other operating side of my brain, right? We've got the right brain hemisphere where we're creative, where we explore God, where we are, um, I believe, in our most natural state. I think we're all, because we're created by a creator, in our most natural state in that space. But it is the understanding that the left hemisphere, which is our analytical, uh, usually the doubting side, the one who wants the numbers, it has to make sense, uh, is also critical. So I was on that side, um, though I was creating this morning. I didn't go straight into Bible study, right into um, a devotional. I had a project that was overdue for my team and uh, had to make it happen before I got on this plane. So I went right into creating uh, this workbook number two for my mastermind and it goes and ships out to them every month and I'm super excited about this month and what I want to share this morning in correlation to everyone who's tuning in is the understanding that what business looks like to most people doesn't have to be what it's like for you. What business looks like for most people doesn't have to be what it is to you. And so I think a lot of times we're creating this framework, we're coming up with an ideology, we're planning something new, whether it's from an idea that was given to you, whether it was from something you see as a problem. Um, I think it's so important for you to understand that you don't have to use the blueprint that everybody else has. And honestly, no blueprint is yours. And so a lot of people come to me from a business coaching perspective and they want the blueprint that I've used to do what I do. They want to be a speaker. They want to be a teacher. They want to be a coach. They want to be a podcaster. They want to be an author. All of these things. And I can surely show you how I did it, but it doesn't mean that it's how you're supposed to do it. And one of the biggest fundamental starting points is talking through your niche, right? Or your target audience. And who are you speaking to? Thomas is in the clubhouse room right now. I'm speaking to you, brother. Good morning. I'm Peloton and preaching over on IGT. 
IGTV right now, live and in action. It's been something I've been doing for the past couple of weeks. It's been super fun and keeping me motivated. <laughs> Vernita, what's up, sister? I'm talking about target audience and, and niching or niche or however you decide to say it. Target, target, it's all the same, right? <laughs> and I believe it's a lie. I, I believe it's a, it's a construct that is the first step that most people use in order to build a business around messaging, a business around service. And I don't think that it's wrong per se, but whenever I start something from a business perspective, that is what every other person is teaching me, I have to ask myself, is this accurate? Is this biblically founded? Is this something Jesus would do? WWJD, right? What would Jesus do? Well, he doesn't do that. He never niched. He never chose a target audience. Yes, he came for the Jews and the Gentiles. That's all humanity, you guys, right? He didn't save for the sake of saving one genre of person. It's everyone that has a heartbeat. And so, yeah, you start a business and you're like, I'm going to serve everyone from the age of 25 to 65 and male, female, black, white, Asian, Filipino, Mexican, Latina, whatever it is that you want, right? However, your voice is going to open the doorway to other people, right? It's going to open the door to people. They're going to connect with you. They're going to learn your love language. They're going to learn that what you say is something they either attribute to and want to come into connection with or it's not. That doesn't mean that you're rejecting people by not inviting them to the table. The invitation should be standing. Jesus' invitation never, ever goes away. He invites you every single day, every single minute of every single day, but are you aware of that? And so our job, as we are serving our community, our clients, you guys should see Allie right now. She is like, I haven't gotten into the dancing Peloton preaching yet, but she is rocking it. She's amazing. Um, and so I need you guys to know that as you share, as you show up, you're going to create your community. It's not a question of if, it's a, it's a question of when. And I think timing is a huge part of that. And so it's this understanding that just because the world tells you to do business one way doesn't mean it's the way that is right for you. And it surely needs to be aligned to what God says about it. And personally, a lot of the business coaching that I've received, especially over the last three years, it isn't actually in alignment. So one of the things is another conversation we'll get into, it's around selling. And I spell selling, S-E-R-V-I-N-G, right? Not S-E-L-L-I-N-G, S-E-R-V-I-N-G. And a part of my methodology is going down and breaking down what is S, what is E, what is R, and each of them is an acronym. And it goes back to and tells people how to actually go down the selling slash serving cycle. What does it look like? Every single time the conversation, the conversion methodology, the way that somebody shows up is the exact same. No matter how different the client is, you remain steadfast. You remain confident. You remain secure. Because their no doesn't change you. Your no, or your no, you can say no too. We'll talk about that later. But their no shouldn't shake you because you are firmly planted in your calling, in your identity, right? I need you guys to pick up on this. So many times because three people said no, we're thinking in our mind with our limited understanding that we need to change our prices. Uh, I need to add more value so that this price actually serves people. That's a lie. That's literally a lie. It's, a, it's the enemy coming in and taunting you from an idea that should have already been established with context, with research, with an analytical lens when you developed it from the forefront, right? You're not pulling this stuff out of thin air. Janice, what's up, lady? Hello, Lauren. Good morning. Peloton and Preachy this morning, we're talking about business 
and Jesus, because that's my jam, right? I'm talking about how selling is spelt serving and how target audience is a lie, right? And so I'm going to come in every once in a while. I'm going to wreck your business mentality because I think it's so important. I think your expansion, I think your prosperity, I think your abundance is on the other side of the lie. <laughs> Isn't everything? Isn't everything? We establish ourselves in this knowledge and we consume what everyone else is saying and something inside of us feels off. So we're talking about pricing in parallel to that intuition. I serve a client, I take the call, and something feels off. They say no. The next person says no. The next person says no. What if everyone Jesus interacted with that said no deterred his momentum, deterred his identity? It wouldn't because he's so firm in who he is. He already knows that it works. He already knows the truth. And that is how selling is serving and ultimately is tied to being sold out. Good morning, guys. Thanks for coming on. God winked the other day, Janice. You'll have to tell me about it. I'd love to hear. Good morning, Eddie and Clubhouse. Man, he's been hanging out nonstop. Got to get to know you, brother. Send me an Instagram. Send me a voice memo. I'm voice memoing you every day so far. Oh, man, this is so important to get, right? Your identity is not secured to their no. This is in regards to relationships of all kind, right? Thinking back to my elementary and middle school days, there was this little boy at lunch. I think I was in fifth grade at the time. And uh, he came over at the beginning of the year and his name was Brandon. <laughs> and uh, he gave me a ring. Yep, fifth grade, <laughs> I was proposed to. Mm -hmm. And uh, I remember at the time thinking, first off, no way, you're not my type. He had earrings and uh, I thought my dad will kill me, he's <laughs> in the military. And I thought, this is not, this isn't right. And all of my friends are watching. What do I do? How often do you feel that way? You've shared your dream. You've shared your goal with so many people. And now you feel like because you keep getting no's, that your identity is being shaken, that your idea is being shaken, that the God dream that's been established in the who and whose you are is now something you shouldn't move forward with because it's not working, I have to confirm this with you. I said no to sweet little Brandon, broke his soul in the middle of the cafeteria, right? Everyone had something to say about it. I'm sure he was embarrassed. And a couple months later, guess what? My no turned into a yes. Guess why? Consistency pays off. <laughs> He continued to try to pursue. He would show up to my birthday party. He would show up to the skating rink. He would come to the places and I didn't even know he was invited. And yet he was watching and yet he was persistent. And yes, he was the same person with my no and with my yes. He never changed. Guess who wavered? Me. How many of you have wavered over a decision over hiring a coach or hi uh, buying a new product or, uh, you know, wavered period <laughs> in a relationship been there that way too, right? It's okay. We're all imperfect. We're all navigating this thing, trying to figure out who we are, but this is the most important piece. When you know the foundation of whose you are, when you know that you've built a business based on truth without lies, when you've cultivated the pricing strategy that feels right to you, and yes, it can change later. That's not what I'm saying. You have to feel in your spirit that it makes sense. You have to feel that when that exchange happens, it's not going to hurt. It's not going to diminish. It's not a lie. You're going to show up in confidence. You're going to serve in confidence. Because guess what? No, 
No. No. Nine no's before you get a yes. Let me say that again. <laughs> this is average. Nine no's before you get a yes. If I counted the number of no's, man, I would be a failure, right? No. Imagine the amount of people who rejected Jesus. If he counted that, if he looked around the world right now in the state of the world as is, and he saw the amount of prodigal children and he counted that as his value, what do you think it would say about his success rate? Ooh, this is so good. <laughs> this is so good. Jesus is successful with or without your yes or no. He is the creator. You, my friend, are the creator of the idea. Your right brain imagination, the artistic work that you do, the way that you want to serve the world, the way that you write, the message that you have to say and share and speak over, it's creative and it's unique and it might be rejected, but every once in a while, you're gonna get the yes. You're gonna hear from the person who understands you, who sees you, who wants what you have, the non-negotiable of the foundation of whatever it is you've created. And so I want to encourage you. Maybe you've been hearing a lot of no's lately. Maybe people have totally been rejecting every component of your idea, of your business plan, of your next step in life, of the choice you made last year, whatever it be. It's about your identity and it's about what he says about its truth. Nobody else, even me, if I was your business coach, even I can't change that, right? It's an internal knowing. It's an internal peace that creates your prosperity, your consistency, and your longevity. Think about Jesus, you guys. With all the rejection, with all the lies, with all the manipulation that was happening around him, with every other person, the amount of Sadducees, Pharisees, my dog is trying to get inside. Dela, come here, baby. Come here, you can't get in right now. <laughs> She's so cute. With all of those people telling him no on a consistent basis, your message is wrong. You are not the Messiah. You are not the way, the truth, and the life. You are not the way I access God. <laughs> if that shook him and he stopped, even for a second, imagine who he would miss out on. Imagine who he wouldn't have been able to interact with because he was down in the dumps about the wayward soul. I want to serve as many possible people as I can, and I will continue to build my team. I will continue to build my mission. I will continue to build my community. I will continue to build the way in which somebody can come into relationship with me. I will continue to build myself so that as the platform and the foundation grow, I too am growing with it. There can be no stagnancy in your life, in any realm. Get on the freaking Peloton and start preaching your way through your voice, through how you share, through how you teach, for who you show up to. It doesn't look comfortable. You might be sweaty. You might not have makeup on and guess what? They'll love you anyway. They'll love you anyway and they'll also reject you. You know how many people are probably talking behind my back because I'm not showing up in a space I showed up to all last year? Man, what a shame. What if they changed their perspective that I'm trying to expand the platform, that I'm trying to drive people to the truth and that place also provides truth but in a different way? Hmm. I'm feeling this right now. I've got two minutes and eight seconds. I've been over cadence. I've been over resistance. You see what happens when you practice? Oh man, I'm number seven in the room out of 83. <laughs> Y'all got me on fire this morning. I need you to know how critical it is for you to show up even when you've got the no, when you keep hearing the no. But... 
the time you hear the yes. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about when the price lands just right. Let's talk about when the message lands just right. Oh, thanks for the encouragement, Janice. Love you. Uh, thanks, Kelly. Yeah. What about then? Is it enough for you to keep going? Is it enough to get you to the next yes with all the no's that will be in between? How will you show up for that yes? Will you give them absolutely everything you have? Will the security and the foundation of your identity, of the framework that you've built uniquely alongside a creative coach who extracts the vision out of you, who helps you understand how this works and what happens next? Because relationship is the foundation of the prosperity. Relationship is the foundation of prosperity. If the person says yes to the transaction, they say yes to the opportunity, they say yes to the product or the service that you're gonna provide, and then you bail, <laughs> and then you don't show up and serve, what if Jesus did this? You guys gotta always go back to the WWJD. I'm gonna bring those bands back. Remember those wristbands? What would Jesus do? Maybe we've forgotten, maybe because the fad and the trend of wearing it on your wrist went away, we actually forgot to say it, to ask it, to do it on a consecutive basis. Do you have things and reminders and people positioned next to you who ask this question enough, who never stop even when someone says no? They're on mission for God. They're on mission to serve. Jesus didn't waver and neither should you. And yes, we're flesh. Yes, there are days that are hard. But if someone converts, if someone transitions to a client and you don't show up as the best version of yourself, guess what happens then? Word of mouth, we hear this. Bad news travels faster than good news, which is sad. And sadly, that's what media has done to the world, that's how it's constructed at this point. But it doesn't have to be that way. You know, Breakfast with Champions is doing the Rise and Grind show every day now from seven to nine and Ramon Ray comes in with some good news and they're honestly all speaking good news, light, love, um, music that's in that space. These are all things I truly value. Hey Melanie, what's up lady? I'm gonna see you tonight in Arizona. I am on that Peloton and preach before our flight. We'll be flying out around 1030. Kelly, I saw you ask me that earlier. And I'm talking about the power of the no. And I'm talking about the fact that that does not shift the sturdy foundation in which you stand. Their no doesn't direct your path. His yes directs your actions. His yes directs your mind. His yes directs your spirit. And yes, I'm still Peloton and preaching even though it's over. Even though I was ranked number five out of 89, let's go Tuesday morning. This is so critical for you to get because what I see time and time again, the value exchange happens that you've made the sale and while you're serving still, you're so fixated on all the no's that are still coming in, on all the back chatter, on all the things that have taken place that have directed and deferred your attention. And now this person who wants to be sold out with you, who wants to have the highest excellence of your attention is getting a little bit less than. It's getting a little bit less than. Don't let that be the case. Don't all just sell, serve consecutively, stand in your identity, Help them stand and look at the same lens and the same picture, the same reason you said yes in the first place. Give them the key, give them the unlock, allow them to manifest something new in their life. Point them, of course, first and foremost and always to Jesus and see what happens to your business. See the prosperity and the abundance and the overflow and watch what God does because Though the ratio might be nine to one, nine no's to your one yes, Jesus is always saying yes. 
you're welcome here. You're invited. There is no target audience. There is no niche in heaven. And so be a conduit of love. Be a pride oriented person because you take pride in God rather than self. Be firm in your footing, in your framework, in your foundation. Don't let the no deter you from the mission. Evolve as your platform evolves. Come on, y'all. This is truth. This is life right here in the midst of Peloton and Preach. It's been an honor to be with you this morning. I got to go jump in the shower and get my babies ready for school. And I hope, hope, hope this spoke to you. I'd love to hear your testimony. I'd love for you to share it out on your socials. If you're watching the replay, let me know. Hashtag replay. And I will send you some fire in the back chat and let you know you are loved, you are seen. And today, this is not your no. I am your yes. I am your yes today. Gotta know that. You gotta know that. Don't let the no's of the world distract you. Say yes to yourself. Say yes to Jesus. And know that there are other cheerleaders that are rooting for you and truly do stand on the foundation of community over competition. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're my family. You're not alone. I see you. I'm your yes today. Say yes to yourself. Love you guys. See you later. Whew.